What is good everyone? It's your boy Nils here and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the game itself. So the game is finally back and running again after about two weeks of absence. And you can already quite tell from the beginning that the models are different. They have all been reworked. Well, about 90% of them has been reworked. So I guess that was the reason the game was taken down in the first place. Even though there is no really an official discussion about this or confirmation. But anyway, some of them are better, I think. Some of them are worse. For example, dude, what is this? On the upper hand, you have Balt Hero, who definitely looks better than he used to be. But anyway, what we all can agree to is that the fact we don't have faces anymore is um, not so good. But it is what it is, I guess. Anyway, um, I've been playing the game for about two weeks now, before the shutdown at least. And as you can see, I have 275 hours of playtime. And I would like to guys like share my insight with you, stuff I did and stuff I didn't. So even if you're a beginner player, you can really get very fast into the game and catch up and get stronger. I'm currently at 5.5 billion damage per click which is pretty okay, but there is definitely a room to grow stronger. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to talk about is mostly directed towards new players or beginner players who are still trying to get over to the very last world. And this is about leveling and getting to the last area as fast as possible. I see a lot of people that have carried or they're just typing on Discord that they say they spend like a day or two on one of the middle tier zones here and I think guys a lot of you are probably making the same mistake which I'm gonna explain you now so basically your goal is to literally get over to the next world as fast as you can just grind enough again so that you can access the next area there is no point to like blow all of your yen on trying to get a, a legendary or a mythical or even a secret hero like there's literally no point guys you should just hatch on the star until you get just enough power to be able to kill the mobs quite easily without spending way too much time and gather enough again to access to the next town. That should be your end goal to begin with. Like, just remember that once you get to the next area, you're gonna be so much stronger. Like, one of these stars is much, much better than the previous ones. For example, getting a rare from this one, which is 36% is way way stronger than an epic or maybe even a legendary from the previous area so your goal should be to just advance as fast as possible also we have as you might have noticed a quest giver on every single area so the guy is basically gonna send you around the island or world whatever you want to call it to kill every mob type a whole bunch of times like 20 25 30 five ten times so once you do this you are going to be awarded with one of the badges here so the up arrow on the right side of our screen is the upgrades tab and there is a whole bunch of challenges here as you can see so completing a badge will give you 10 percent more yen which is important so in order to complete one of these badges and get them you have to complete the quest from this guy which would mean that you have to kill everything which takes quite a while so if we want to combine both of them in order to be as efficient as possible what i would suggest you to do is so starting a super island you're gonna rush your way to ninja village and then you're gonna rush your way to crazy town and once you get here and you get like some of the fighters from this star and you get quite strong you are gonna go back to the super island and finish your quest there it's gonna take you quite a bit of time but it is way way faster than spending like your entire time hatching here and trying to finish the quest with fighters from the star it is way faster so just push i would say two, two areas next and then go back here to do your quest so completing your quest as i said earlier is going to give you 10 percent more yen as you can see by getting the badge and you will also get a mount from every area so the first mount gives freezer spore so let me just get on it as you can see and every mount that you get from every next zone is gonna be faster and faster so 24 25 
but that's about it. The goal is to just get to the last area as fast as possible, remember that. Because once you get here, your gain income is going to be so much higher. You can always just go back and try to get all of the good fighters. You can go for shiny mythicals or secrets, whatever you want to do. The next thing we're going to talk about is time trial. Since we're still on Namek, we're just going to head over to the left side here on this building. You will see a gigantic ore glass on the ground. So once you enter here, you will enter the time trial zone. So basically, the time trial is an infinite grind mode where each room gets progressively harder than the previous one and you can infinitely farm again here to hatch more fighters and you also can acquire boosts. Alright guys, we're back and I have skipped over to room 68 because up until now there wasn't really anything interesting going on anyway. I was just mostly one tapping the mobs and the bosses. So here we are now and as you can see on the bottom left of the screen, we have gotten pretty lucky with the boosts. We've managed to accumulate 14 minutes of luck, 44 minutes of yen, and we even have 1 minute of super damage bonus actually, and 5 minutes of experience bonus. So these are the boosts that I was talking about earlier, which you can grind here, as well as yen. And basically you have to try to push yourself as further as you can, as every single room gives you drastically way more yen. So the way this works is, if you look on the top of the screen, you're given 5 minutes to clear out the next 3 rooms of the time trial, and on the 4th room you will find a red button, which once you press will reset your timer back to 5 minutes. And that's kind of how the thing functions, which you will try to do until you basically just run out of time and lose. Next thing we're going to be taking a look at are raids. Once a raid is available, if you open the teleport panel with all of the worlds, you will see a yellow beam next to the appropriate world that has spawned. If you have a look around, you're going to see a gigantic yellow beam in the sky, so you simply just have to run towards it. In order to access the raid, you're going to need a raid ticket. You have a free ticket that you can claim every day, from your inventory and you also have like yellow tickets that you get by farming time trial. In order to successfully beat a raid, you have to kill the boss. The boss's HP is split into four even quarters as you can see and he is currently immune to the shield. In order to break the shield and be able to attack the boss, you have to defeat all of the small enemies around him. Once you successfully repeat this process for 4 times within the time limit, you have successfully defeated the raid. Defeating a raid will award you with a number of shards from the corresponding world that you completed the raid in. Another thing worth mentioning is that there is two raid difficulties, the normal one and the massive one. The normal one will award you anywhere from 3 to 5 shards and a massive raid will give you anywhere between 13 and 20. The next question that you naturally might have is, what do I actually do with all of these shards? The shards can be used in two ways. First of all, on every single world, you might have noticed this machine on the right side of it. Once you interact with it, you will see that you can use your shards here to fuse your fighters. Fusing three mythical fighters with five shards is going to give you a crafted unit, which is much, much stronger than the mythical ones. There is also the ability to fuse the shiny versions of them which are also really rare to get on, and they cost a lot more shards. Right guys, we're over at Hero Academia now, and right in the middle here is the passive machine. So as you have noticed by now, every character that you open has a chance to come with a passive. There's a whole bunch of passives, and what this machine allows you to do is you can essentially reroll your passive. So if I go here and I choose a fighter, um, okay, let's do it like this. So this one. 
you can see you can either use your shards to reroll and the value depends on how good the hero is and what map you're on etc etc you can also use robux so if we go ahead and reroll this panel will come out and we're just gonna pray to the RNG Jesus of getting a good power or we actually go from tactical 2 to tactical 1 here which is the worst power and so on and this is where you're gonna spend most of your shards and this is why shards are actually important well, we end up getting giant which is actually one of the best passives that you can get this is a tier list that I've created with all of the passives that are available in the game right now please note that um, these passives are constantly getting nerfed and buffed so this list is subject to change and this is kind of my opinion about the passives so if you ask somebody else you might have a different opinion starting on of the S tier we have four of them we have the three mythicals and tactical three so solid gold got a slight rework lately and i'm not entirely sure about the value but i think the current value is that increase your damage by 1.5 times as well as increasing your yen income ghostly was the new passive that came with the last update before the game was shut down it increases your attack speed by two times if i'm not mistaken and he makes your fighters slightly invisible kind of giving you the ethereal look like a ghost it's a very good passive and it could be maximized even more if you do a lot of animation cancelling with your ultimates but this is a topic for a different video next up we have blessing which has increased your damage by 1.75 times and your speed by two and a half times and lastly on the s tier we have tactical 3 which in which allows you to do double damage on bosses on the a tier we have tank tank increases your damage by 1.65 times but gives you 50% speed reduction. Giant gives you 1.5 times damage, 50% increased size, and reduces your speed by 20%. Next up, we have Strong 3, which is pretty self explanatory. It increases your damage by 50%. Tactical 2, which allows you to do 50% more boss damage, and Genius 3. Genius 3 might not give you a buff directly, however, it allows you to level up 50% faster. And after a certain point, you will guys notice that leveling up your heroes increases your damage point dramatically. So being able to speed level a character without spending that much yen is really, really good. After all, once you're done leveling a character, you can simply just reroll your passive. On a bit tier, we have the tier 2s and tier 1s of Strong, Genius, Tactical, as well as Rich 3 and Collector 3. These two power-ups may seem on not that good while they're on B tier, but I'm going to explain you later how you can really abuse them to maximize your output. On the C tier we have Rage 2 and Rage 1 and Collective 2 Collector 1 respondingly. The D tier is absolutely useless and you want to try to avoid it at all costs. You have Tiny and Speedy. Tiny reduces your, your size and increases your speed by 5 times while Speed gives you 3% more movement speed. It doesn't really increase uh, your damage by a lot and the only argument that you can make is that your character can get there faster and maybe do one or two attacks but it's really the worst passive that you can get then we have the three negative passives that you can get only by hatching a character once you reroll them with the passive machine you can ensure that you will not get them dump reduces your exp required to level up slow is going to slow your hero down similar to what a tank and giant does it's actually 50% speed, so your character will essentially be a tank without the damage increase and weak causes your characters to do 20% less damage. Previously I spoke about Rich and Collector. These two passives are very underrated at first sight and if used properly, you can get so much ammo out of them. As you can see here, I have a team full of Rich units. I have named them all with a dollar mark so I can find them easier. So if we kill this guy with a... Without using any of my rich units, I would get 1 trillion. Using the rich strategy, where we swap out our units, is gonna end up giving us 3 trillion. However, we have to consider that that 1 million was not actually 1, as the numbers are rounded, and it was more like 1.5, and, and this is more like 2.5, and, and it just got rounded up. However, you can still see that the difference is quite big. The same principle can be applied to time trial, which is gonna make you end up with 20 to 25% more yen after every single run. 
At the very early stages of time trial, you can also consider using a whole bunch of collectors units so that you can stack up the boost faster. The problem however with that is that its value has been greatly diminished ever since the pause button was removed from the game two updates ago. The only current min-maxing that you can do with boosts, for example, what I have done here. I have like my inventory fully stacked, but I have not fed any of my units. So if we have a look here, if we try to, f to feed on our blindfold, it's just going to give us 39.2 e EXP. So if we go out of here and our EXP bonus starts running, that 39e would gonna be 49e so that's a way that you can kind of get the most out of your boosts and time trials filling up your bag with a well my bag is 1.6k units right now right so filling up my bag with 1.6k units the passive from the shop to open stars faster and the passive to open stars from the challenge here makes me fill up my bag in about seven minutes give or take it depends how many mythicals and how many units you have that you have locked in your bags but it's give or take seven minutes anyway guys that was it for this video i think i covered pretty much everything i should and i hope you picked up some useful information out of this video to help you improve and get better besides all of that we talked about it's mostly just about grinding after that so there is that part and obviously the biggest part is just RNG like if you're lucky and you pull up shinies like shiny secrets or shiny mythicals and then you can craft you're just gonna get insanely strong so RNG is a big part of the game but yeah to be like that sometimes please hit that like and subscribe button as it will help me out a lot and click that notification bell to not miss any of the future uploads and until the next one take care peace out